Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at a little hack which I have actually used. Now, some of you might find it useful, and if not, you could just keep it in the back of your mind. And this hack involves a Vero board or strip board, which you can see here. Now, normally we use Vero board to make prototyping projects, like this one here, where we mount all our components on this Vero board and we make isolation channels on the back and then we solder all our components on. Here's another example of a prototype built on Vero board. Now Vero board will also make very nice heaters, heating elements. And here's an example of a heating element which I have made from Vero board. This runs on 5 volts. It's a 20 watt heating element and it consumes about 4 amps. Now where would you want to use something like this? Well in my career I have spent a lot of time on mountaintops where we set up radio repeaters, either UHF or VHF, and 900 megahertz data links. We also do RF propagation tests where we measure RF signals uh, propagating through mountainous terrain. Now usually we're on a very top of a mountain peak and in the winters it gets very cold and access to these repeaters are by helicopter or snowcat or in the summertime we use 4x4 trucks. Okay, here's one of our radio sites which is located on Vancouver Island, which is in British Columbia, Canada. Now this is the highest point on Vancouver Island. And the only way to get there is by helicopter. So we have access to a Bell 206 Jet Ranger, or sometimes we'll use a Hughes 250 or 500. Now landing at the radio site, you can see a radio equipment enclosure. It's called a comm shell, and it's made by a company called Sinclair. It has a special coating that absorbs heat and keeps the snow and ice from sticking to it. Now on the bottom of the comm shell, is where we keep our radio equipment and batteries and on the top part of the comm shell we hang an antenna it's a long 210C4, it's a, it's a gain antenna. Now we have other sites that, that we get access to by snowcat in the winter time it gets very cold and here's one of the sites it was about minus 40 when I took this picture and there was a big snowstorm that night so we had to actually stay the night. Now this site covers the Coquihalla Highway which is the interior of British Columbia and there's a show on TV called Highway Through Hell. I don't know if some of you might see that. And this is the mountain that would actually cover that highway, the Coquihalla Highway. Now inside our radio sites, we have a lot of temperature sensitive equipment. So when we go up to a site and I find that we have a problem because it's a temperature problem, I actually made some of these heaters by Vero Board because it's a two hour drive by Snowcat. So we had to fix it right there. So it's a temporary fix. So I built some of these heaters from Vero Board and got the equipment up and running. Okay, let's have a closer look at this heating element. Now the dimensions of this element are 10.5 centimeters long by 5.5 centimeters wide. Now you could cut it to any length that you want so it fits into your enclosure. Like you can see here, if you have an enclosure that has the slots that you could actually fit a board in, you could cut it to that size and fit it in there along with the electronics that will keep the electronics warm inside the enclosure. So on here we have 10.5 by 5.5 and, and we have 20 strips all the way down from 1 to 20. So we apply our power to the top left hand corner, this strip here, you can see right here. And the power goes along the first strip, gets jumpered over to the second one, goes along, gets jumpered over and it zigzags all the way down to the bottom to this corner where we have our other power. So we apply our DC power, our total of 5 volts. 0 to 5 volts between this point and this point. So if we add up these strips, they'll add up to 210 centimeters total. And for every 161 and a half centimeters, we get 1 ohm of resistance. So you could actually calculate the resistance of your element to the voltage that you can apply to it. So in this case, with 210 centimeters of strip, we have a total resistance of this heating element of 1.3 ohms. Okay, I have my heater connected up to my power supply and I will apply 0 to 5 volts DC to the heater and we can monitor the amperage and the wattage which is displayed on the power supply. So I'll give it 1 volt. You can see a current has gone up. I'll give it 2 volts. So we have 3.19 watts. Go to 3 volts. We're up to 7 watts, 4, and there's our 5 volts, 19.1 watts, 3.8 amps. So let the heater heat up a bit, and I'll take a reading 
with my infrared thermometer. Up to 51.2 degrees C. You can see it's very warm. It's, it's very uniform. There's no dead spots. It's warm all over. Take another reading. Go up to 55.9 degrees C. And we'll take it down, back down to zero volts. Now with a microcontroller, we can control the amount of current flowing to the load, which is my heater, by using PWM, pulse width modulation. Now if you look at my breadboard, I have an Arduino Nano which is driving a MOSFET transistor with a PWM signal which is driving my load. Now I have an ammeter connected up so we could actually monitor the current flowing to the heater and I have the PWM signal mapped to my keyboard so I can control the percentage of PWM so I can increase the percentage you can see the current going up so I'll take it up so there's around 3 amps so I have 3 amps flowing to my heater and I could take a reading it's 44.5 degrees C now I could take the current down and decrease the temperature of my heater so I could take it all the way down to zero now inside that Mega 320P microcontroller there's actually a temperature sensor so we could actually build a closed loop system where the microcontroller can monitor the temperature and then increase it or decrease it as desired. Now for my temperature, I got some cold spray. I could spray the chip. You can see the temperature dropping. And then she'll warm up and she'll come back up. Okay, so now you know how to build one of these Vero board heater elements. And they work very well. So start off with a voltage that you have that you want to apply across the heater and divide that by the maximum current through the heater which will be 4 amps. I wouldn't put more than 4 amps through one of these heaters. And that will give you your resistance. Now to calculate your resistance you use 161.5 centimeters per ohm. That's the length of strip. So you have to calculate how long a strip you need for your resistance. And you can measure that with an ohmmeter or you can put a voltage across the heater and measure the current and the voltage divided by the current will give you the resistance. Now remember as these heaters heat up the resistance will actually increase and you could actually see that on the power supply when, it, when I had it hooked up to the power supply. And the power dissipated by the heater is the voltage across the heater times the current through it and that will give you your power in watts. Now this is OEM Vero board and if you get a knockoff Vero board the, the copper clad might be thinner so you might have to do your own uh, uh, measurements. So with a power supply and an ammeter you can figure out the characteristics of your heater element.